Here we are, week 17. Uh, you know, it's been a year plagued with injuries. Uh, you know, my, my heart go out to DJ Wanham and TJ Hawkinson, obviously. Two guys, impactful players, uh, leaders. Yeah, it's tough, but as you know, it's all a part of the game. And with this, next man, next men. Oh, uh, you know, tough opponent coming in. Uh, the Green Bay, obviously, it's a every it's each and every week is a one and oh mindset. But you know, you, you're feeling it just a little bit more, just kind of understanding the landscape of things, where we are, where everyone else is around the league. It's hard to ignore that. Um, so you know, we're excited to get back to U.S. Bank. Uh, I harped on the heavy with the guys this week about how. You know, we're, we're we're two and five at home, and that's that has to has to sit a certain way. Uh, you know, in your gut, in your mind. You know, for me, I have a hard time sleeping at night, feeling you know that we we're, we're not producing at home in front of you know, quite frankly, the best fans uh, in this league. And so with that, we got to find a way to produce and put out a, a quality product and find a way to get a win this week. When it comes to penalties on kickoffs and. This goes for punt returns too. It, it seems like it's just very difficult to avoid those. Like, how does how does that sort of weigh into decisions about whether to bring the ball out, things like that? Yeah, that's a good question. I think for for me, I will never you know teeter or, or, or go away from being aggressive. Uh, I never tell a guy uh, not to strike aggressively, not to strain aggressively. Um, you know, the penalties we we can we can kind of deal with. It's more so the the pre-snap, post-snap penalties is what I have an issue with, rather than the combative penalties. Combative penalties we can work through, unless it's something that's a technique issue uh, that's kind of taking place there. You got bad feet, you got bad hands. Uh, you know, you're not working the proper technique or proper leverage that that I'm asking you to do or coaching you to do. We can get that worked out. But what well, what I'm not going to fault you for is striking a guy and maybe you got your hands too far outside or you do, you don't feel a runner going outside. Of you and as the blocker is trying to leave you're still kind of constricting them a little bit because football happens fast at the end of the day and so I never want to you know jump on a guy's throat for a holding unless it's just something egregious or something that you're not being coached to do so you know with that we just we're going to continue to have that aggressive mindset and you know let the penalties will fall kind of how they do uh, you know we got called for blocking the back I want to say versus Cincinnati on the kickoff return by Brian Osweiler. The league came back and said uh, it wasn't one. And so, you know, with that, you know, what can you do other than just keep coaching these guys hard and, you know, allow the laundry to fall where they may. Or the injuries of that <clears throat> Yeah, you know, it's it's been that, that next man mentality, you know, week in and week out, honestly. And, and so we do a good job of post-practice working guys. Uh, we have a lot of development periods for these younger guys, even some of the veteran guys who are on the practice squad, just to make sure that they're locked into the game plan and fully understand. Because you never know, you can you, you can go into a week feeling like I'm not going to be playing on Wednesday. And next thing you know, Saturday morning rolls around and someone's come down with a flu or fever and you're getting called to action. And so we do a great job as a staff training uh, in the weight room of making sure guys are well prepared to understand what their role is going into the week in the event the person in front of them aren't able to, to make it to the game. Could uh, blocking the back be added to like the expedited review process at any point? Should you know, it, that, that would be something, you know, that would be nice if they could possibly do it, but we kind of already seen how that worked out with the, the PI, the PI system, so. I don't imagine they're going <laughs> to take the time, you know, for little step brother special teams to <laughs> <laughs> review penalties. So I don't, I don't see that happening, Craig. <laughs> Matt, how would you describe the way Kevin has kind of led this year from the top? When things just keep popping up. Yeah, I think you know you you look at you, you look at the leadership at the top, and you you want to talk about culture, leadership. You know, how do guys respond? And that's really kind of been the, the motto of this entire year, honestly, is how are we going to respond? You know, start off the year 0-3, how are we going to respond? We lose our starting quarterback, how are you going to respond? You lose your best player on the team, Justin Jefferson, how are you going to respond? And so with that, it's just been uh, next man mentality, how we continue to pour into these guys, how we can continue to really truly rely on our culture, rely on our guys around us because you know I firmly believe in you got coach led teams and you got player led teams. And more times than not, if you have the right coach in place, well you're gonna have the right players 
who can lead the way when adversity does hit. Because more times than not, it's the player-led teams that's going to take you the distance at the end of the day when things are afraid or going crazy on the sideline and you're really hitting a lot of adversity during the football game. It's the players that you really want to lean on to really bring the group back together, right? You, you look at it on TV, it's not, you know, they're not commenting, man, look at Kevin O'Connell getting after that O-line. Like, that's that's not what they're doing, right? It's more so, ah, man, look at the quarterback, you know, going to his O-line or running back. You know, those are the guys that they're spotlighting because at the end of the day, it's a player sport, right? It's a player play sport at the end of the day. Us coaches, we can only we only have so much of a small hand uh, in the game plan. And, and so with that, I, I think Kevin has done an unbelievable job as you kind of look at how he has led us as coaches and given us the autonomy to fully pour into these players and return. You know, you get good, good leadership out of a lot of guys, uh, you know, across the board from multiple positions. Would you uh, like to make the Pro Bowl case for your long snapper? Oh, all pro po. That's <laughs> that's not even. You know, you, you look at obviously you can cut cut the tape on. Uh, you know the intangibles that this guy provides. Uh, the tangibles, most importantly, um, you know who he is as a person. The snaps are perfect. I would say <laughs> perfect. All pro po. Maybe we need to come up with a campaign. He got a campaign going. Anything yet? Sure he does. Yeah. Probably. All pro po. Something. Right something going. Need to make sure we get that going. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think it's a it's a doubt. It's, he should end up being a back-to-back -back All Pro and a Pro Bowl punter. punter. What's the part? That, what's the part that we don't see about a long snap? We see the snaps. I yeah, I think the biggest thing that 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 might go unheard and unseen is is how much he pours into the young guys. Uh, you know, dealing with a, a young core group of special team players. Uh, you know, those player-led meetings that they have every single Saturday morning is led by him, and you know. He, his ability to communicate not only in just the punt phase but all six phases uh and for me to be able to trust and rely on him as a player to be able to execute and communicate you know what we want to do in each and every phase only shows you know how much accountability how much responsibility he holds and to himself to such a high standard to be able to go out and basically just be a, a secondary coach for me